let's talk about chert. Chert is a sedimentary rock that is comprised of micro or crypto-crystalline silicon dioxide, i.e. it's comprised of quartz. It forms in soft sedimentary rock where the micro or crypto-crystalline quartz conglomerates together in this soft sedimentary rock. As these crystals conglomerate, the surrounding sedimentary rock is incorporated into the chert. It is this incorporation of the surrounding sedimentary rock that gives chert's their varying colors, patterns, like you see before you. So you can see you've got banded chert, you've got more single colored chert, and you've got varied colored chert and it all has to do with the sediments around the chert during its formation. There are still some discussions on where the formation of chert originated from, but there is some good proof with certain cherts that they originated from ancient seabeds from dead organic life on the ancient seabeds. More specifically, these little tiny uh, microscopic little creatures known as diatoms and radiolorians, which are little tiny microscopic creatures that have a silica-based skeleton. And so it was the silica of these dead creatures from their skeletons that provided the silica source for the silicon dioxide, i.e. the quartz. And you can actually see with some of the examples I have here, this one you can see right here. This is a bit of a brachiopod in the chert. So that, that indicates that this was part, part of the ocean bed at one time. And this piece of brown chert has coral tubes going through it which is a great indication. And then this smaller piece of brown shirt, it's very faint, but you see those brown squiggly lines? That's some kind of brachiopod most likely. So those are all indications that it was once part of a ancient seabed. Now you might be asking, Ontario Rockhound, what about flint? Your title also has flint in it. Well, Geologists quantify different rocks on what they are made of instead of their surrounding environment. Not that the surrounding environment is important. It can tell us a lot about the rock or mineral itself that we're looking at, but we classify things by what they're made of. So actually, geologically speaking, chert, flint, and even a lot, of, a lot of the things we call jasper are all classified in the same group as microcrystalline and crypto, cryptocrystalline opaque rocks, basically. And so that the, when, when people talk about, oh, there's a difference between flint and chert, that's not really true in the geological sense. This is more of a... Um, a let's say, historical and archaeological difference that has has been uh, created for um, his historians and archaeologists because of Chert's use and Flint's use in, the, in human history. And so generally, when you want to try and differentiate, let's say, Chert from Flint... You usually you hear, oh well, chert is like lower grade and flint is high grade. It's 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 more, much more homogeneous in its crystal structure, and that's kind of the talking points you'll often hear. And so that isn't necessarily true geologically speaking, but a good way to try and differentiate the chert flint from the normal chert 
is generally when people speak about Flint and they're talking about actual Flint and not just um, the, not, once again, actual Flint, that's not technically correct. Um, they talk about chert that has formed in chalk, which is a specific type of sedimentary stone. And it, because of its formation in chalk, um, due to the type of sediments it incorporated, the crystal structure is much more uh, homogenous and, let's say, higher quality, which is where this uh, myth of higher quality comes from, um, versus non-flint chert, which is chert that is found in limestone. And when you find chert in chalk, you find it in nodules, so... You usually say flint is nodulized chert, and when you find chert in limestone, it tends to be much more larger masses, almost like large layers. And so that's really, it isn't the geological differ differentiation, that's, we don't differentiate flint from chert, they're both the same thing geologically speaking, but for let's say artifact collectors, flint Speak, when we speak about flint, really it, it should be nodulized chert that is found in chalk. Which interestingly enough, in North America, I believe there's only one or maybe two known sources of this type of material. So even though you hear artifact collectors and arrowhead hunters say, well, this is flint, that's technically not correct. Now, geologically speaking, we don't actually have a differentiation between, let's say, Jasper and Chert because both of these, structurally speaking, are micro or cryptocrystalline quartz. So, geologically speaking, we don't really differentiate this piece of Jasper from this piece of chert in the sense of its make, its makeup, basically. So both of these we recognize as the same general type of rock, even though their formations might be different, the type of inclusions they have to cause the coloration and patterns will be different. Like for example, Jasper, uh, this red hat comes from iron oxides that are incorporated into the rock, whereas this Banding has most likely has to do with layers of different types of sediments that have been incorporated into the chert. And so even though there are certain things that change the coloration and there's differences in the formation of the material, the general makeup of the material is the same. So they are geologically classified as the same type of rock. Now, I also quickly want to cover the human history side of Chert. So chert has played a very important role in our past since for a very long time materials like chert, flint, jasper and other rock based materials were used by our ancestors to make points like this one and tools like these in order to complete regular daily tasks to survive. So this is kind of, to me, it's an interesting topic because I do a bit of arrowhead collecting, as you guys can see, but I also am a rock hound. So I collect a lot of minerals and rocks and I always saw some confusion. So I wanted to, first of all, try and clear up the confusion even though I probably confuse more people saying hey well technically there are a lot of the things we call Jasper a lot of the things we call Chert and a lot of the things well the, the things we call Chert the things we call Flint and a lot of the things we call Jasper are technically all the same thing their, their makeup is the same there's just slight different differences in the their surrounding formation and the incorporation of different types of other other sediments and minerals that cause coloration and pattern differences, so to say. But in general, their makeup is the same, so we classify them as the same. 
So hopefully for you arrowhead collectors or arrowhead hunters out there, um, hopefully this was a good informational video about the types of materials you might actually find your points and tools made out of. And hopefully for the mineral collectors and the rock hounds out there, you learned a little more about this very interesting material and a little bit about its, its use in history. So we have come to the end of the video. I want to thank you guys for watching. And if you enjoyed this type of stuff, please do like and subscribe if you haven't subscribed. And I will see you guys next time.